thanks for coming along. It's Andre from the High Performance Academy and I'm really happy to welcome you to our first live product launch webinar. Now these webinars are designed for us to bring you news on the latest and greatest products in the tuning industry and that gives you the chance to get the first word on what's coming out. Now during this webinar if you've got any questions please feel free to write them in the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. To comment, you will need a live stream account and you'll be prompted for your details when, you're, when they're required. I'm here today with Philip and Scott from Link Engine Management to tell you about their next brand new product. But before I pass over to them, I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about Link's history. Now, Link have been in business now for around about 20 years. Um, their products have already been well proven in New Zealand and around the world. They've been chosen as the control ECU for the NZV8 Super Tourist Series. And worldwide, they've been used in series as diverse as Rallycross, Drag, Jet Sprinting, and Drift. Their existing G4 product was already excellent and encompassed a range of plug-in and wire and ECUs. With their ability to control variable cam timing, as well as drive-by-wire throttle, the existing G4 range could control just about any, any engine from a single cylinder two-stroke through to V10, V12 and two, three and four rotor, rotary engines. One of the strengths of the G4 was its excellent ability to control both fuel and ignition timing. Now obviously this is the nuts and bolts of any ECU and this is one area where the G4 excelled. It went one step further though, adding complex 4D, 5D and 6D compensation for both fuel and ignition, as well as some advanced features for the end user. These days people require more from an ECU than just the ability to control fuel and ignition, and the G4 didn't disappoint here with some advanced motorsport functions uh, such as um, anti-lag, uh, launch control and data logging. Um, if you had a turbocharged engine, it also offers closed loop boost control. And for peace of mind and engine protection, it also offered closed loop knock control for the ultimate in safety and reliability. So that's the G4 range that's currently in existence. I've now got uh, Philip, the CEO of Link, to tell you about their next big thing. And I'm going to pass you over now to Philip. Thanks, Philip. Thank you, Andre and thank you everyone for joining us online. As Andre mentioned, I'm the CEO of Link Engine Management and we have listened to your feedback from you, our customers out around the world, but also from dealers and particularly the tuners who are actually using our product, installing it and uh, supporting it out on the field. Based on this information, the engineering team have worked for the last 18 months and logged over three and a half thousand hours on developing this next big thing. Today we're very excited and I am very proud to tell you about the all new Link G4 Plus ECU range. The G4 Plus picks up where G4 left off and it provides us with a powerful and expandable ECU that lets us bring in a whole host of exciting new features, both today as what's available off the shelf today, but also uh, gives us the platform going forward. It not only gives us uh, engine control with increased um, features and uh, zones for the tuners to use, but also gives us the capacity to um, take it out uh, to making it more drivable and flexible. We're really proud of what we have in the new G4. It represents our best and most powerful ECU we've ever taken to the market. And uh, we're really looking forward to tackling uh, the range of 21st century cars that we have um, to go forward to. I now pass you back to Andre. Thanks for that, Philip. Um, 
I've actually been privileged enough to have the chance to test a G4 Plus and a little bit later in this webinar I'm going to talk to you about some of the functions that I've found really handy and, and how I've found the ECU to use. In the meantime I'm going to pass you on to Scott who's the head engineer at Link for the G4 Plus project and he's going to talk you through some of the new features that you'll see over and above the existing G4 functions. So thanks for coming along Scott, I'll pass you on. Good morning guys and welcome. Um, as Andre said, I'm briefly going to cover over some of the new things that are available on the G4 Plus ECUs. The first one we're going to talk about is the OBD2 function. Um, one of the great things about the G4 Plus ECUs is that they now support OBD2. Um, since about 1996, most vehicles that have come out from the factory have had an OBD2 port located somewhere around the steering wheel. Um, if you're not familiar with OBD2, OBD2 stands for Onboard Diagnostics 2 and it incorporates a standard set of live engine information and parameters that get fed out to the port located under the dash. This data stream can be read with a generic scan tool um, and it can provide live operating information as well as diagnostic fault codes. The good thing about the Link G4 Plus ECUs is that they can replicate this OBD2 data stream and allow it to communicate with the scanners. And also, the other great thing about it is, which is probably more of more benefit to the end users, is that um, the G4 Plus spinning out that OBD2 stream, um, that can be fed onto a smartphone or tablet using a OBD2 to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth um, expander. We're now going to have a look at a quick demonstration of how this works. This video was taken off the vehicle, and as you can see there, the RPM is going back and forth, and this is just one of the parameters that you'll be able to use. Um, engine temperature and throttle position are some of the other good things that come through on that data stream. The next feature we're going to talk about is push button start or momentary start. Um, starting your car might sound like a pretty straightforward thing, but the days of key start starting are coming towards an end. Um, you will have noticed on a lot of the newer cars now that push button start is becoming very common. Um, we're pretty proud to say that the G4 Plus ECU now supports this feature. It's quite customizable. Um, and we're now going to have a look at a video of, of how to set this up and how it works. Okay, you'll see on the video there now, there's a few things you need to require that are required to set up the starter control. The first one is an auxiliary output that has to be set up to control the starter solenoid. The other thing that is required is a digital input um, configured as start position. We then go down to the chassis and body area to the starter control section. You'll see there that you can select from one of four modes for it. We're going to set up the touch start mode in, at the moment. Um, you'll also see there that um, max crank time is another setting. This is the maximum amount of time that the engine is going to crank for before it stops and start a deactivation RPM. Um, this, if the engine gets up to this RPM, the starter motor will stop cranking. If we now switch over to the logging view. Up the top here, we've got engine speed. And a little bit lower there in the middle section, we've got the starter solenoid output. And right down the bottom, we've got the digital input um, from there. Okay, if we start the log now, you'll see um, down the bottom there, when the digital input receives a momentary signal, the starter solenoid is going to crank. It's going to crank for up to three seconds, um, as that's the maximum time to be supplied. We also, the other option that's going to stop this cranking, you can see we give it another momentary start, is when the engine RPM crosses the 500 RPM barrier that we set earlier in the setup options for the starter control. This gives you engine protection, it means that it's not going to be over, over revving with the starter motor going at the same time and also means that the starter motor is not going to crank infinitely if you don't um, get the engine started. Now we're going to move on to the next um, cool feature of the G4 Plus ECUs and that is display units. Um, in the past the Link G4, unit, G4 ECUs could only use metric display modes and for some of you in the US this was a problem, it's not what you're used to and so based upon the feedback that we had from you guys we've now put in a configurable display. You can choose between a metric and imperial display mode. This affects aspects such as temperature, pressure and air fuel ratio. 
um, and it's very easy to switch. There's a button at the top of the PC Link screen, or you can also press the U button on your keyboard. G4 Plus now works natively in units of Lambda, but is still displayable in AFR units. Um, the other cool thing that you can do with this is you can customise what metric or imperial means for you. Um, in the options menu there, if you select units set up, you can configure. For instance, you might like everything in metric, but you still want to use AFR. That's fine, you can set that up. We've now got another short video to show you on how this works. Okay, so if we look at the screen there that you're seeing, um, down the lambda area there, we'll see that the lambda um, parameter is in lambda units at the moment. Also, if we look at the ECT and the IAT, both of them are in Celsius. And also, heading over to the fuel table there, we can see that the manifold gauge pressure is in KPA. We now go to the top and press the units button to switch back and forth. Um, you can see the screen switching back and forth there. If we now go back to the lambda parameters, we can see that they are in AFR units. The ECT and IAT are now in Fahrenheit. And the MGP is now in PSI. We also look at the um, AFR lambda target table. You can see there that at the moment it's in AFR units. Pressing the button makes it swap through to lambda, which is particularly useful for tuners who are, um, prefer to tune in lambda units, which is becoming a lot more common now. The next cool thing we've um, come up with on the G4 Plus is improved CAN con communication. Um, CAN stands for Controller Area Network and is a communication technique used by most OEM manufacturers um, to send a lot of data. It uses only two wires so it keeps the wiring down in the vehicle um, and it's a great communication tool between the different devices. Um, it's quite often used for sending information from the ECU to the um, instrument cluster from the gearbox controller and the ABS units to the ECU. Um, it's quite a complex setup and the cool thing about G4 Plus is now that um, it can support a lot of these factory devices. So your instrument cluster previously on a lot of um, standalone ECUs would not be able to run it. Um, but now with the G4 Plus ECUs the capability is there to be able to do this. The other thing that it allows is you to run aftermarket devices such as dashes, wideband sensors and EGT sensors over CAN. We've now got a short video showing how the CAN can be configured. Okay, if we look at the CAN setup window there, go to the ECU controls menu, select CAN setup, select the mode that you require. You can see there that we've got um, a lot of OEM modes available there. Um, and this will be added to over time as we do more and more vehicles. If you want to set up an aftermarket device, you're going to set up the user defined mode. The next thing you're going to have to set up is the bit rate. Most of these aftermarket devices are going to, are going to work at 1 megabit or 500 kilobits per second. To do this, you then select the channel and then the mode and in there you're going to select to uh, like on this instance here the transmit generic dash so this is going to feed out information from the ECU to a generic dash the next thing you're going to have to do is put in the CAN ID that the dash is expecting um, this information is generally provide from, provided from the supplier click apply and click OK and that's all there is to setting it up for an aftermarket device like that One of the other cool features that we've got for G plus, G4 Plus is feature unlocking. Um, what this means is that you only have to buy the features that you want and keeps the costs down for the ECU, meaning that if you don't require a lot of additional features, the ECU price is going to be lower for you. ECU features can be unlocked by you, the owner of the ECU, by simply entering a code into PC Link. But this code can be purchased for your local Link dealer. Selectable options for the Link G4 Plus include advanced data logging, onboard throttle control on the G4 Plus Extreme and plug-in range of ECUs, internal knock control, and CAN and OBD communication. We've got another little video here which is going to show how this feature unlocking works. When you first start up an ECU, you're going to get a, a message telling you the ECU is not activated. 
you then go to the ECU controls menu and feature unlock, you'll see there that the serial number of the ECU is entered. If you then select the code that's been given to you by your dealer and enter it into the feature unlock window and click unlock, the unlock code has been accepted, you'll get a message stating this. If we then go back into that window and have a look, you'll see that the check boxes that were previously unchecked are now checked, showing that the um, features have been unlocked. The other place you can check this out is in the Help and ECU Information screen. Down the bottom there you can see that they're all reading enabled now. Okay, the last feature I'm going to talk to you about now is the improved knock control that the G4 Plus ECU has received. Knock control did exist on the G4, but the good news is that now the G4 Plus ECUs have got an expanded range of filters and gain levels. If you're not familiar with knock, what knock is, Engine knock, or detonation, is the biggest killer of performance engines. Knock is a condition that occurs when the heat and pressure in the cylinder um, causes pockets of fuel and air to spontaneously combust. The result of this is a huge spike in cylinder pressure, and this can damage the engine, including the piston, head, and cylinders. Um, knock control monitors the engine knock using a knock sensor and can automatically detect knock on individual cylinders. It, what it does when it detects this is it retards the timing, ignition timing, to that cylinder, thereby reducing the chance of engine knock or damage happening. Um, once knock is removed, the timing will be slowly reintroduced into the ECU until another knock event is detected. This ensures maximum engine safety without having to compromise on engine power. Knock control is now available on the G4 Plus Extreme, the Storm, and the, ex and the Extreme based plug in ECUs. This is going to give you more protection for your engine and peace of mind when running it. Um, we've got a quick demonstration again on how this works. Okay, we're looking at the knock setup window here at the moment. The first thing there is the knock mode. Um, for those ECUs that have got it inbuilt, you want to have that in knock internal. The next thing there we've got is the frequency channel. You're going to have to select the frequency that suits your engine and knock sensor type. There's some guide and the help on how to do this. The next important setting is the gain channel. This is the volume of the knock signal that the ECU is reading and can be increased or decreased to suit other um, parameters as needed. The ignition retard limit. This is the maximum amount of degrees that the ECU is going to retard the ignition for a cylinder when engine knock is detected. The retard, retard gain setting. This is the rate at which the ignition retard will be applied to the cylinder. The advance delay. This is the amount of time after knock has stopped being detected before the ECU will start to reintroduce the ignition timing to that particular cylinder and the advance rate is the rate at which that timing will be reintroduced. Next we've got four lockout conditions. These are the conditions that will control when knock control is working. The first is the low RPM. In our case now we've got 1300 there, so, so below 1300 um, it's not going to be working. Same with the high RPM setting. Above 5000 RPM knock control will be disabled. Throttle position low lockout, below 10% the throttle position, uh, the knock control is not going to work and also the, the throttle position delta lockout, which is the acceleration rate of the throttle position. The next important thing to set up is the knock target table. As you'll see, down at lower RPM, we've got a lower value, somewhere around 100. And as the RPM increases, you can see the values increasing in the table. This is the level that um, knock has to exceed before the ECU will start to retard, retard timing on individual cylinder. We now go to the logging view and we'll have a quick overview of how this works. Up the top here, we've got engine speed. The next one down we've got in the middle there is the individual knock levels from each cylinder and also the knock threshold. Up the top there, the pink line there, you'll see is the knock threshold. So at the moment, we're looking at 375 um, at 2600 RPM. Down the bottom here we've got the current knock level being received from each cylinder. It's currently below the threshold table value and so that is why when we look at the bottom screen here which is the amount of retard being applied to each cylinder we can see that zero 
um, degrees of retard is being applied because the current knock level is under the threshold value. We now start up the log and we start to apply a little bit more knock to the engine. You can see it approaching the threshold. As it crosses the threshold line, you'll see that the ignition um, retard is being applied in the bottom section of the logging there. Um, you'll see that it immediately drops down on that first one to three, and then after a second, starts to be re back, reintroduced back into the timing um, to get to allow you to have maximum power still. I'm now going to hand you back to Andre, and he's going to cover some more of the cool features in the G4 Plus ECUs. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Scott. Um, yeah, that's been really interesting, just seeing the, the changes that, um, that you've introduced. And for those of you who have already been familiar with the existing G4 range, the, the good part is that the user interface still kind of looks pretty much the same. It's pretty much what you're used to, so you're not having to learn a whole new system. So as I said before, I, I've been lucky enough to have one of these ECUs for a few months now and we've been able to do some testing in-house with it um, to give some feedback to Link as well as to get our head around how everything works before these ECUs hit the market. I just want to talk you through just a few of my favourite features with the new Link G4 Plus range and the first of these is the trigger scope function. So in, in my experience over the years I've been tuning, one of the most uh, common problems is an ECU where we're getting triggering problems. So when I say triggering problems, I mean the ECU isn't getting clean information about engine RPM and engine position. Now all of the ECU's calculations are based on those two inputs, so if it's not getting good information there, then basically none of its calculations can work properly. In the past, diagnosing these problems has required an oscilloscope. Uh, while most tuning shops will probably own an oscilloscope, it's not necessarily something the home enthusiast is going to have. Even if you have an oscilloscope, just physically connecting it up to your ECU so you're getting data from the, the trigger inputs is quite time consuming and fiddly. So the Link G4 Plus does away with all of that. It has a built-in trigger scope function. So what that does is it allows you to visually see the trigger inputs from both the crankshaft speed sensor and the cam position sensor if it's fitted. This can be really handy for diagnosing these problems quickly. The other thing you can do is you can save the screen capture. You can send it to either your local dealer or through to Link for technical support. So I've got a quick uh, screen capture that we've done of how that works. I'll just show you now. So if we've got our engine running and we go up to the ECU controls menu here and we drop down to trigger scope, you'll see it opens up this box here and we can click capture. And that'll just capture a short section of the trigger one and trigger two inputs. Now it looks pretty, pretty mixed up right there but what we can do on the left hand side is we can control the, the zoom on that by adjusting the time divisions and we can slowly zoom in to get a clearer picture of what our inputs are doing. So this sort of information is invaluable with um, diagnosing these sorts of faults and as I say you can save this file, you can send it through to Link and you can get some support on, on what's causing any particular triggering issues you've got. So this is a really powerful feature and it's, it's really a really valuable addition in my opinion to the G4 Plus range. The next thing I'm going to talk about is input and output labelling. Now this is um, something that's, that's been difficult for the whole time I've been tuning cars, uh, particularly on complicated engines where you've got a lot of auxiliary inputs and outputs that may do different things perhaps nitrous control, VTEC control, maybe intake runner control. When you've got all of these things set up it can be really difficult to go back into your map uh, sometime later on and remember what each of the general purpose inputs and outputs that you've set up do. So the G4 Plus has addressed this allowing the end user or the tuner to apply a unique label to each of the inputs and outputs. So basically what you can do is you can label each of your inputs and out outputs with something that makes sense uh, particular to what that, that task is doing. So when you look at that in a month or six months or two years time, you'll instantly be able to remember what that function was doing. So again, I've got a quick video, I just want to show you how that actually works.
Okay, so we've got a, um, a setup here, and I'm just going to show you. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, we've actually got the wrong video in, in there. That's okay, I'm going to just talk you through it anyway. Um, basically, what you can do is just go into the particular um, digital input or analog voltage input or analog temperature input. And if you've got a general purpose input that you're using, let's say for differential temperature, so that would just be labelled as a general purpose temperature input normally and that's where it can get confusing. So with the input and output labelling, you can simply go into that general purpose temperature input, click on it and you can select and write your own label, in that case you'd write differential temperature. So that will store into the ECU and then when you come back to it later on, you can quickly and easily see what you're actually measuring with that particular input. So that's a really powerful feature and it's one of my, my personal favourites. The next thing I'm going to talk to you about is the advances in the data logging on the G4 Plus. I'm going to start by saying that the data logging on the G4 itself was already pretty good. One of my favourite features with the existing G4 data logging was that you could data log and tune inside the same software package. So this made it really quick and easy, particularly if you're on the dyno or the road. You could just press F8 on the keyboard, start data logging, do a pull on the dyno or on the road, then press F8 again to stop the data log, and you could instantly have a look and see what your data logging showed. Now, I want to just show you quickly through uh, one, of the, one of the ways I use that data logging to help me tune, and I'll show you a quick video here of how that works. Okay, so I've got a, um, a file here that we've got opened up and it's got a, um, a log file attached and I'm just going to show you how we get to the logging. We go to the logging tab and you can see I've got the, the log file zoomed in. Now it can be quite difficult to find whereabouts in the particular log you were at any particular time. Here we've got engine RPM, throttle position, manifold pressure and lambda. If I want to click on a particular point and see whereabouts in the map I was, we can just do that on the log file and we switch back to the tuning menu and if we move around we can see that there's a pink crosshairs here. Now that pink crosshairs shows us exactly where in the log file the ECU was accessing at that particular point in the log. So that makes it very quick and easy to narrow in and zoom in on where we want to make changes to our mapping. Another feature which is really nice with the G4 logging is the ability to quickly configure our log file to show the data we want. So I'm just going to add a group here into our log and I'm going to show injector duty cycle for both the primary and secondary injectors on this particular car. So you can see it's really quick and easy to add these in and as soon as we've got them selected they'll just pop up in a new group at the bottom so we can analyse that particular set of data. So this is all existing data and data logging in the G4. Now in the G4 Plus we have some more advances. If we go into the setup logging menu, we've got some advances in the way we can set up the ECU logging. So this is the onboard data logging. We now have the ability to select only the features we want to data log. Um, in the past we didn't have control over that. The other thing we can do is select the frequency at which we want to log certain parameters. So for instance, Things like intake air temperature and engine coolant temperature which move quite slowly, we don't need to log those so quickly. Things like manifold pressure and engine temperature, uh, sorry, engine speed, we want to log those much faster. Up here in the control conditions, we've got some controls over when the data logging will start and stop. You can see here it switches on above 3000 RPM and it won't switch off until the RPMs drop below that threshold for three seconds. So this just gives us a lot more control with the way the data logging functions. Um, the other advantage with this is because we're only data logging the particular parameters we want to see, that gives us the ability to download the logs much quicker out of the ECU because we're not logging so many parameters. The last function I want to talk about is the additional tables that have come about with the G4 Plus. Now the, the G4 has been around for a little while now 
and when Link first came out with it, they had a really powerful processor. As they developed more features and more firmware functions, uh, they ran out of room in the processor. Now, this wasn't really a problem for most users. If you had a complicated engine, though, maybe a multi-cylinder engine that had um, maybe some complicated parameters where you wanted to do individual cylinder fuel and ignition trimming, perhaps 4D or 5D trimming or compensation maps, and then also add individual cylinder knock control. It was possible that you could actually run out of room on the processor. Basically, it, it ran out of room for those additional tables. So with the new processor fitted to the G4 Plus, that's given Link the ability to add a lot more tables and, and increase that number. So what that means is if you do have a complicated engine that you're running, you can now make full use of all of the power of the G4 Plus. You can use all of those compensation tables. It's going to give you the ability to do your tune more thoroughly, get a better result, and basically use all of the functionality in that ECU. Okay, so that, that basically covers our, our presentation over this new product. Now, as I said, we, we're open for some questions now. I'll, I'll read out the questions that we've got, and then I'm going to pass those over to, uh, to Scott here for, um, for answers. So the first one we had was, will there be any further development on the standard G4 ECU? It's possible that we may do another firmware release, but if we do, it's likely only to be um, bug fixes. There won't be any new features developed for the G4. All the concentration of that now is going to go onto the G4 plus range of ECUs. OK, yeah, that, that makes sense. I can, I can understand that. Um, Mike also asks, if we already have an extreme ECU, will the existing loom be able to use, i.e. are the pinouts the same in the same number between the G4 and the G4 Plus? Yes, yep. So if you've got an existing G4 Extreme, um, the G4 Extre Plus Extreme will plug straight in. Um, pins are all in the same location, they use the same connectors, so it's quite an easy upgrade. Okay, that makes it nice and easy for those wanting to do those upgrades. Um, Andrew asks, do the OEMs use their own language uh, for the CAN bus that uh, Link have to crack? So can we, can we get some clarification on how that works, Scott? Yeah. The CAN is kind of a, a standard protocol as used, um, but the, the way it works is, is the same, but each manufacturer unfortunately sends all the data in different locations, which um, does mean that it is basically a case of cracking that information. Um, we normally sit there for CAN analyze a tool and spend a lot of time to, to configure um, the CAN bus and so that we can replicate it. Um, so those OEM modes you saw in the CAN setup window, um, all of those there were, were worked out by ourselves and um, they're available for use in Warren products. And as we do more cars in the future, that list will grow. Um, yeah, so it's basically, yeah, it does need to be cracked. It's not, not a simple process, unfortunately. Great. Um, Mike asks a question that I'm sure a lot of, lot of people will be wondering, are the old Link G4s going to be upgradable to the G4 Plus specification? No, unfortunately not. Um, because of the hardware changes, including the new processor, this isn't possible. You are going to be Im able to import your G4 base maps into a G4 Plus ECU though, so um, the upgrade path is quite easy. Um, Andrew asks, is there any feature that will allow the ECU to interpolate between two timing tables uh, based on knock events, as in a low octane table and a high octane table for different grades of fuel? Mm, I believe that that doesn't exist. Currently the, the threshold table or target table that you've got there um, is, is only one setup, so if you wanted to do this um, you would have to have two versions of your base map saved and currently swap them. But that is, is a really good suggestion and it's certainly the sort of thing we could look at adding. Okay, uh, Simon asks, can you output the data stream from the OBD2 to an Android device? Yes, yep. So if you've got um, one of those OBD2 to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth adapters that you can buy, they're pretty common now, um, you'll be able to output the OBD2 data to a tablet or um, phone where there's normally support for iPhone or Android and there's, there's quite a few apps you can get now, Rev and Talk are two of them that are particularly good, um, so that information is definitely possible to get out to, to, your, um, to your tablet or phone. Great. Um, we've got another question here about um, the ability to have direct Lambda 
and, and by that I'm, I'm assuming the, the person is asking do we have the ability to directly feed a, a, a lambda sensor into the ECU? No, so you still, still need a wideband controller unit. Um, the, you're going to connect that to an A and volt channel and that A and volt channel is expecting a varying voltage depending on the oxygen content. So um, in short, no, you cannot connect the, the oxygen sensor directly up to the ECU for a wideband application. Now, in, in saying that, uh, one of the advantages that we've just talked about with the new G4 Plus is the advanced CAN communication templates. Mm -hmm. And Scott, I'm, I'm right in saying that the G4 Plus can now communicate with some aftermarket CAN-based uh, wideband controllers. I believe the KMS product was, was one, is that correct? Yep, yep, that's right. So KMS produce a, a wideband um, sensor controller that transmits its data over CAN to the ECU. We've got support for that built in now. And over time, we're definitely going to be adding support for more devices like this from different companies. Oh, great. Um, Garth has asked, what's the maximum frequency of the data logger and has that increased? The maximum frequency is 100 hertz. Um, the actual top rate hasn't changed. What has changed is the fact that you can individually configure each parameter to log at a different rate. Great. Uh, Barry asks, is serial communication still available on the G4 Plus? Serial communication is still available, so for serial tuning it's available, or if you've got a, a dash, um, aftermarket dash, which is already running on serial, it's highly likely that it's going to work again. The only exception really is the display link, um, which we produce, that's now going to have to work on CAN. Nyan has asked, uh, can we read the CAN bus codes from the car with the, the G4 Plus, I'm assuming he's meaning there? Um, in terms of like fault codes, um, I guess the fault, fault codes from the ECU are obviously readable anyway in PC link. Um, from other devices on the car, no, there's no support for that um, at the moment. So, so by that, Scott, you mean we can't actually read out that we can't see the live CAN bus stream through the G4 Plus, that's, that's what you're saying there? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. great. Um, Steiner has asked, is there a form of flex fuel sensor availability in the firmware, uh, like the one the Haltech Platinum use? Yep, so we support two flex fuel sensors. We support the what's known as the GM one and also the Continental one, which is what the Haltech one is. Um, so it's very easy to connect up and you can get the percentage of ethanol content in your fuel and the ethanol temperature and you can use that for tuning information and set it on um, axes of tables. Okay, um, Jerome's asked, is it possible to data log the trigger scope output? to review later on? There's no data logging of it. Um, when, you, when you press the capture button, it's going to capture for at least 720 degrees of engine cycle, and you can then save that as a JPEG. Um, and so you can, you can save snapshots by saving them as JPEGs, but it doesn't actually occur in a log file. OK, um, we've got a question here. Is there any improvement in the resolution of the gear change ignition cut um, time delay at the moment? I think the resolution is 0 0.05 millisecond, uh, 0 0.05 seconds. Yeah, I, I believe that's still the same as it was in the G4 range. OK, we've got another question from Niam. With the new look ECUs, uh, can dealers control it so other dealers can't sell out their territories? Um, there's probably nothing to stop an ECU physically being sold into another territory. I guess that relies on honesty of dealers. But what it does have is um, ECU base maps now can be password protected and also um, can be made so that they can only be used in a certain ECU. There's a setup there off, off the um, file menu there where you can save as encrypted and in there you're going to enter a serial number. What that means is that that base map is only going to work on that particular ECU so um, at least dealers can control the base maps that they're EC, um, yeah, the, EC, the base maps that are used in which ECUs. Sorry. Okay. Um, Mike's asked is there going to be a way of uh, running telemetry with the new G4 Plus? Um, there potentially is already, like pre previously I know that people have used the serial stream for tele tele telemetry. Um, there's nothing additional now in there, but if, for instance, I'm not sure if this device even exists, but if there was a CAN-based one where you could take information off the CAN bus and use that, that would be quite possible. But there's nothing specific in the ECU for telemetry. Tony's asked, uh, will the new G4 Plus be able to control factory automatic transmissions in the future? 
in the future that, that's highly likely, um, it, you're going to be relying, I suppose, on us to decode the information that's required and add the support into a firmware release, which you'd then install. Um, it's a very tricky process to do this, um, but if, for instance, you happen to come across the information um, and you could give it to us, then that would make the job a lot easier. Okay, um, we've had a question come through which is probably on a lot of people's mind. Uh, when will the G4 Plus be available for purchase? Uh, G4 Plus is available for, pur for, for purchase now. If you contact your dealers, they're able to order it for you, so there should be no problems there. Great. Uh, John's asked what, with the uh, logging functions that are feature locked, what is the difference between the standard logging that comes with the ECU and what will be the advanced features that are upgradable with the feature unlocking? So with the logging, the Link ECUs, the Storm and the Extreme and the plugins are all going to come with 15 channels of selectable data for the ECU logging. Um, for most, most of you that's going to be fine because you've normally got a select purpose in mind when you're logging. Um, but if you do need more, you can do an optional upgrade to 25 channels. Uh, the other features that are available are onboard knock control, e-throttle control and OBD2 um, communication. Okay. Uh, Barry's asked, will there ever be support for the PC Link software on Android devices? Potentially there could be in the future. There's currently been no work done on it though, so um, not any time soon at least. Okay, look, I think that, that pretty much draws to a close most of the questions we've, we've had here. And we're going to just finish up the webinar here. Now this webinar will be available for viewing later on on both the High Performance Academy's uh, Facebook page um, and our website and also linkecu.com. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming along and sharing in, in what is quite an exciting product release. Uh, we're really excited to see the advance, advances that Link have put into this new G4 Plus platform and we're just as excited to see where they're going to be able to take it in the next two or three years as they get the opportunity to develop a lot more of the, the functionality and features that the new processor is going to allow. I've been very impressed with the ECU and I'm sure all of you out there will be too. I'd like to thank Philip and Scott for coming along and sharing this information with everyone today. Uh, thank you for giving up your time. Um, I'd also like to, to thank you all for, for joining in and watching. This is the start of something we intend to be quite regular to keep you up to date with what is happening. So thanks everyone for, for joining us. Um, if you do want to learn more about new products as they come along or if you're interested in learning about tuning, please head along to www.learntotune.com and also join us on our Facebook page, High Performance Academy. Thank you very much. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.